Hello everyone here playing Farming Simulator 22 and welcome back to West Bridge Hills, our 10 year anniversary revisit here on the map since last episode. Finished up uh, plowing here on field 15, got that field all plowed here. Uh, that definitely took a while and that uh, Case IH uh, Ecotill plow we have, not exactly the largest unfortunately. So um, anyway, uh, this episode here, hopefully gonna work on replanting the field here, excuse me. Uh, Need to, well, I actually don't need to run a cultivator across them, but for my uh, sanity, for being a little bit realistic, we are going to run a cultivator across it. And then I've got the, uh, the planter behind us there ready to go as well. Figured I was probably going to throw hired worker on one of these tasks. I figured the cultivator, I was going to run the planter, but it uh, looks like I might have to get a little bit of a head start here. Our planter might be a little bit wider than the cultivator. Just throw this on a hired worker here a minute. And uh, confirm this, because this is... What would we go with a 16 row, right? Yeah, so pretty sure this 16 row is going to be a little bit wider than our cultivator. So we might have to make a couple passes here uh, before we can actually start planting. Got the John Deere 8410 here on the planter, by the way. Yep, definitely going to have to make a pass or two here with the cultivator here. We're just ever so slightly wider, aren't we? Okay, so you know what? Might as well, uh, we'll just unhire you. We'll just take over for this job here for the moment. Let's uh, set up some GPS here. And we are going zero degrees. We are going to auto with that. Hold it back on the tractor. We should be good. And it would help. I did not notice that the hired worker lifted it back up out of the ground when I hired him. How nice of him. Running a uh, Case IH disc here, by the way. Yes, I know. I've been, a lot of our equipment's actually red here at the moment. I know. Terrible. Terrible. Oh, well. No, oh, yes, there's... Uh, for those who didn't see last up, so there's our large missing spot in our, was that canola wheat? No, that was wheat, right? Yep, our wheat field there. Yeah, that is kind of annoying, everyone. We'll have to see once we get to the comments here for our uh, field quality manager, uh, notice that or not. As I mentioned last episode, we probably should uh, send a medical team down to him, because when he does notice that, oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy. Hired worker also working on uh, fertilizing here, by the way. So once we uh, start planting, everyone, uh, we'll have both our applications of fertilizer finished on the field. So plant and done here. And then once we're uh, done, we'll be ready to uh, probably fast forward some time here again. I think this is about like the most work we've done here in a while. Typically, you know, we're turning these fields around pretty quick, everyone. And, and I would still say we are turning it around pretty quick, but got a couple episodes of work in here before we manage to... Uh, you know, skip some days. And of course, as I've uh, said before, I'm in two, as a reminder, when it comes to a uh, fertilizer here, uh, we are playing a base game here without the precision farming mod. And with that, you need to fertilize twice. And when you do that, everyone, you need to make sure you have something in between your fertilizer applications. Uh, we've mentioned that many, many times before on the channel, but maybe if you're a little bit newer to the game here, Again, just as a reminder, make sure you have something in between your fertilizer applications. Uh, in this case, Evan, I've got cultivating in between my fertilizer applications, although I should probably make sure I'm getting right to the edge. Eh, yeah, oh well. Might miss a little bit on the edge there with a little extra fertilizer, but fields uh, going in and out, not quite exactly 100% straight there. And again, as we've uh, said before, there are quite a few things that uh, count for going in between your fertilizer applications. Uh, you know, something as simple as maybe putting your fertilizer first, then lime, or uh, maybe in this case too, I'm not going to fertilize before we plowed, you know, if you didn't want to cultivate afterwards. Uh, you know, again, I, mean, I, I always like to cultivate after plowing. Just in real life, Evan, you would never plant on this, right? You would always work this up here a second time here. Uh, field cultivator Probably maybe not so much a disc. This uh, seems like they've really fallen out of favor here in the last uh, couple of years. I mean, the last 20 years, really. Evan. You don't see people using discs so much anymore. Unless, of course, they're the high-speed one. It, it seems like what's happening, Evan, is 
disc. Ooh, big, bad, evil disc. I don't use those, right? However, if we go to the shop here, uh, these, however, are, you know, great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this pretty much is a disc as well. But uh, yes, that one, there, there's a little bit of a difference there, right? Those high-speed discs are designed for going a little bit uh, quicker. Uh, a lot of times, they're not quite as aggressive on the angle as well. And usually, they're not designed to go very deep either. They're usually, a little bit more shallow type work. You know, a couple inches at the most. And then, yeah, moving across the field fairly quickly. And, and some of the discs, too, I mean, they're not even necessarily designed for, like, necessarily working up the ground. Uh, they're more designed to cut up the residue, especially, like, if you're uh, doing this behind corn or something like that. When your corn has a lot of residue, so you go across the field with your high-speed disc just to uh, cut up all that uh, corn residue, all the corn stalks and all that good stuff. And, you know, maybe try to incorporate it into the ground just a little bit. Again, a couple inches at the most. Get a little bit of dirt on top of those corn stalks to get them uh, decomposing. Most farmers usually prefer to uh, work the corn stalks up into the ground if possible. I know us, if you want, some of the other uh, farmers on YouTube, everyone, uh, occasionally farmers can't do that, and then they end up having to like burn the corn stalks out in the field. I mean, let's face it, I mean, if the corn stalks get too thick, you got to do something with them. You can't leave them on the field, otherwise your field won't dry out and you won't be able to plant it. And uh, bad things can happen as a result of that, right? So, you know, if you can't manage the corn stalks, you, unfortunately, you have to get rid of them somehow. Again, obviously, burning is not the preferred solution uh, probably for most farmers, but if that's your only solution, that's, you know, got to take it. Again, most farmers probably would prefer to uh, work it into the ground as opposed to just burning it. Oh, that fertilizer spreader is making quick work. But speaking of fertilizer, fields 16 and 17 should be all set now, right? Yes, they are both have two applications of fertilizer. And again, speaking of fertilizer, I'm if I was to take this planter and just plant straight on top of this plowed ground that I have fertilized, the fertilizer that is on the planter, oh, actually, you know what? This planter, does this planter have fertilizer? This planter might not have fertilizer, so that might be a whole like, mute point there on that discussion, that one. Yeah, because that case does not have fertilizer, right? So, it actually, in that case, it wouldn't even matter, one. But if it did have fertilizer, I wouldn't be able to plant straight on top of this. Or I would, but then the fertilizer would not count. Now, the game probably would still keep using the fertilizer, by the way, of course, Evan. That's, <laughs> I always thought that was rather amusing, right? Like, your fertilizer doesn't count, but don't worry. The game will still use up the fertilizer. Oh, we'll maybe make one more round here, one. Then we'll uh, switch over. We'll start running the uh, planter. Again, that was my kind of initial plan here this episode. Nothing wrong with doing a couple different jobs, though. Running the case uh, Magnum 400 here. A little bit of a weird front dual setup there, in my opinion. I don't know that I've ever seen a front dual setup like that before with those. Bit of a different uh, type of spacer there, but... Just, uh, you know, again, not a type of spacer I'm uh, particularly familiar with there. Most, uh, for those who wonder, by the way, the, the space I'm typically uh, familiar with is just like the tube. That's usually what you see. I mean, this is some sort of looks like two-piece deal going on here. I'm not entirely sure what the purpose of that is. Um, I don't know if we... Do we have an example of, like, uh, what is typical here? Imagine we could probably find something, especially if we go over, over to the uh, John Deere tractors here. Oh, what a, yeah, there we go. Nice John Deere 8R. If we uh, bump that up to... Well, that's not going to help us, is it? This might not help. Oh, there we go. Yeah, there we go. It, yeah, exactly what you see right there. Everyone. Just a, you know, a column, basically, right? Bolts on there. Bolts the other tire on there. And then, of course, when it comes to the rear axle, I mean, usually you just have that, like, the actual axle itself, right? And uh, for those, the way it typically works, Evan, usually you have like some sort of wedge system or clamping system there. 
with that uh, that black piece that's in the middle that will clamp on to the axle and then you just bolt your tire on to that piece. basically the, the hub up there And at least on the uh, the American side of tractors, that one, usually with these narrower tires like this, uh, farmers will have their tractor set up so that the width lines up with the rows of corn or soybeans for that matter. Uh, your row crop planter, the tires will line up with your row crop planter. Again, row crop soybeans, or corn, or most other crops possible too. But so you'll have a row of corn kind of like right next to the tire here. Uh, you also have a row of corn right in between the tire, and then on the very outside you have another row of corn, and these tires are basically just straddling those rows. That way you're not actually like running on top of where you're going to be planting, or of course as the field growth progresses, that one, you're hopefully not running on corn then, or again whatever you have planted soybeans might be, you're not running on your crop actually. So you can actually drive through the field with this tractor. You know, again, maybe fertilizer, spraying, whatever it might be. You're not actually just like going over the crop and destroying it, which uh, obviously, I mean, if you're using like some of these European, uh, and, and again, I call it Europeans, probably maybe not necessarily the most fair to some of it, but if we go back to, where's that 8R we had? 83. Yeah, these are row crop tires, a little bit narrower. Go back to the, like that configuration of one. Yeah, you're probably going to be... Uh, going over, running over the crop you have planted, right? Which, probably not ideal. Again, always interested, and I always like to look at the uh, the difference there between uh, what I call the American farming styles versus, uh, again, what I typically call the more European farming styles. Just interesting to see the differences there, everyone. Differences that as I've said many, many times, keep reminding me of, like, are we farming back in the 1950s here? No offense to any of my uh, European viewers, but uh, every time I see European farming, I always got to, like, I'm sorry, was this the 1950s? And then there's, like, multiple reasons for that, too, right, everyone? Again, you look at the size of some of the European equipment. It's like, okay, three meters. Yeah. Haven't used three meters in a long time. Good luck finding any sort of uh, three-meter farming equipment around here. And then, of course, after uh, we're done looking at the equipment, I went, then it's the uh, farming technique. It's like, okay, yeah, that, uh, that was probably how we did it back in the 1950s. But, uh, yeah, we, we don't do that anymore. Okay, we're going to throw a hired worker on this. I'm going to take over for the planter here. We should be far enough ahead. We shouldn't catch up too quickly, hopefully. Oh, let's see. And we're still set on corn. I think that was my plan for planting corn, right? Part of it is I wanted to use the uh, larger planter or two of one rather than uh, breaking out our grain drill here. Let's see, we need zero degrees, except zero degrees is probably now. Zero degrees is not gonna load. So we first need to load 90, then we can go back to zero. Old uh, GPS bug that has never been fixed yet. That one is what it is, oh well. Lowering down, we're set on corn. GPS is active, and away we go. It's nice uh, contouring to the ground there, I like that. So we're basically going back with uh, corn on corn here. One, we harvested corn before. We're putting corn right back on the field. Hopefully, should probably go check this. Hopefully, this isn't too full over here. Corn flour. Yeah, I would think by the time the corn is ready to harvest, that one it should be down low enough. Hopefully, anyway. That might be the like one problem if we like for to keep putting corn on this field. That one might get to a point where we overflow the flour mill there. You know, again, like most of Giant's production facilities, Evan, they don't necessarily produce the quickest sometimes. I mean, you 
you know, again, I mean, if you were really hitting this uh, grain mill hard here, you probably wouldn't be able to fit all your crops in here unless you're really good at uh, just uh, getting them all evened out. You know, wheat, barley, oats, sorghum, corn, and soybeans to get all six crops being planted and you're doing a really good job at rotating them. Maybe you could then. <laughs> I don't know, but I always thought that was a little bit weird how giants did that. Seems like the uh, production facilities should produce a little bit quicker. Okay. Probably should go check and see what's how the hired worker's doing here a minute. Uh, field is all mulched here, by the way. One nice thing about that uh, case eco till that one. Uh, it does have a mulching function on it. Which is apparently hiding our fertilizer. Uh, let's see if we can get this uh, fertilizer running here again with a hired worker. Others, I might have to finish this last pass myself here. Okay, looks like he's uh, doing pretty good. Yeah, again, I know I keep saying this, I'm about to have a lot of problems with hired workers here on this map. I don't know what's up with that, but kind of annoying. And uh, by the way, for those of you maybe seen when we purchased this planter oven, uh, we purchased a little bit more of a stripped down, cheaper version of this uh, planter here. So we don't have the uh, center fill option on it. We just got each individual row boxes here. Oh, come on there, Case. You know you can pull that uh, disc up the hill. Well, that uh, Case is struggling with that one, isn't it? That's what you get with that red paint, Evan. That's what you get, right? Oh, uh, speaking of the red paint, by the way, I was going to mention this here earlier, Evan. For those who didn't see the beginning there of last episode, we switched out what Case Magnum tractor we have. Uh, we now have the more American or U.S. version of that tractor. So, you know, it actually has, like, the proper drawbar and the three-point linkages change and, you know, stuff like that, right? Anyway, to the uh, comment section here a uh, moment. And as a reminder, before we read the comments, if you haven't already clicked that uh, subscribe button, Evan, don't forget to do so. Always very much appreciated. And of course, once you are uh, subscribed, don't forget to turn on your notifications. That way you get notified of the next latest, greatest Westbridge Hills episode going live. And then don't forget to, if you like the episode, Evan, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Or, I suppose, if you don't like it, you can always give it a thumbs down, too. But, uh, you know, that, then we'll give you the frowny face for that one, right? Anyway, to the comments here a moment. Evan. Uh, Charles was saying, love. Okay, cool. Mason was saying, it sounds like you just rolled out of bed and started recording. Mm, no idea. Okay. Uh, field 11 or 18 would be a good sugarcane field. But it is understandable if you want a bigger field. That way. That way. Me, a bigger field of sugar. Yes, I, I would definitely love to have a bigger field of sugar cane. Uh, glad to see that the red eco-till is working for you. Somebody better check up on that field quality manager. You may also have eggs to sell as well. Yes, uh, there are actually eggs to sell. I did look at that. Uh, I know Mason Farms mentioned here a while back that we might have some wool to sell. We do. And then I went and looked at the eggs at the same time. So, yep, we got both of them. Is that uh, fertilizer spreader finished? He did finish. Really need to make sure you map here with these hired workers up on there. Yeah, uh, yeah, bad things happen sometimes with them. Hoover was saying, I use the F12 key to fix Giants hired workers mistakes. A great video. Hey, thank you very much for that. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, I like the F12 menu for fixing that stuff, huh? And I'm wondering if what Hoover means is. There's actually a couple things you could probably do. Obviously, you can cheat money with a screen oven, but 
under one of these here. No, that's the environment. Is it this one? Yeah, it's under fields. So you can actually, like, set your field conditions if you want to. So, like, if you know what you're doing, that one, you can, like, turn your fertilizer on and off for this field. You can set the planted state. You know, in the case of uh, field 16 here, I could go in here, uh, set your field. This one? Yeah, this is the right one, right? You know, turn weeds on and off, field stones on and off. Uh, we could advance the growth. So the hired worker missed something. I, mean, I could go back here, set our field state. I think is it. Oh, I got to be careful what I click here. I don't want to break something. I want, at least on this field anyway. Yeah, and maybe I better not click anything on here. But you can basically set, let's say we wanted to have this field planted in corn. I could set it in there, tell it's on corn, put it up a growth stage, and I could actually probably clear that out. And fix that hired worker's mistake, so to speak. I would probably recommend saving the game. You know what? Maybe we could do that. Maybe the end of this episode, maybe we'll try that. Just fix that hired worker's mistake. See once how well it works. Actually, really not an option I'd consider doing before going to this one, everyone. Definitely an option, though. Oh, we're neck and neck. Neck and neck with a case here. I think we're actually going a little bit faster, though. We're going 9 miles an hour. I think the case was going 8 at the most, if I remember correctly. Christopher was saying, good video. Keep it up. Hey, thank you very much for that. And I do like the Westbridge Hills. Well, nice. I always like the uh, the Westbridge Hill map as well. One Never had a problem with it. I know some folks really did not like this map. But, uh, again, as far as American maps were concerned... And American maps that were actually released by Giants, right? I, I thought it was a halfway decent one. Norton was saying, goodbye traffic, you won't be missed. Nope, nope, won't be missed at all. Uh, Mason was also saying, according to the time-saving stock check mod, you do have wool to sell for a little bit of money. Oh, what do we We ran out of corn. Okay. Well, that might let the uh, hired worker get a little bit further ahead on the cultivating there. That's probably actually a good thing. Uh, Mason was saying you could sell the pickup wagon and header cart as well as the animals for additional money. And also, Randy survived 24 episodes with traffic turned on. That is a pretty good achievement. I, I thought so as well, Evan. Made it 24 episodes before we finally turned off the bloody traffic. That's got to be a new record. Uh, Mason also said awesome video. Keep up the hard work. Well, hey, thank you very much for that. Okay, first one has seed, or if at least it doesn't, we'll put some seed in it. Oh, wait a minute, that's right. I remember that. I mean, this is the one we could not get to open, right? Oh, wait a minute. Actually, you know what? Speaking of which, somebody told me here. I think you, uh, you have to fold it out. That does not make any sense, but we'll try it, Evan. I know back when we first bought this plant, I mean, I never was able to actually, like, fill it. And a couple of folks left comments saying, uh, I think they said they should just be able to open the cover, which. I'm not sure what key. I, I Yeah. Anything that's shown up here? I don't see. The normal, like, open and close cover keys, that one are not working. And just like pulling up here, and that's actually double check. I think we actually have seed in here. Yes, we, we got 5,000 liters of seed in there. So there's plenty of seed in there, everyone. No doubt about that. So yeah, unfortunately, I don't know what I'm doing wrong here. The normal cut. Oh, that was a that was a disconnect on that one. Yeah, no idea, Evan. I think we're just going to fold it back up, and we'll have to go back to the field here, and we'll use that uh, lovely F12 menu we were just talking about here a few moments ago to uh, top the cedar back off. I mean, what am I supposed to do? I mean, yeah. I suppose I could keep driving in circles around that. Uh... That's right. we got to go this way, don't we? It's annoying because that gate is, like, right in the way there. 
But I'm now nope, not gonna make this turn, am I? Nope, not gonna make this turn. Nope. You know what? Not dealing with this. Nope. Why that gate doesn't just finish swinging open? Uh, you know what? Hmm. I probably can't actually do anything about it. Oh. Can I? <laughs> bye bye, gate. Oh, they both disappeared. Would you look at that? Just look at that. Would you just look at that, Evan? They both gone. Uh, uh, sometimes you can't necessarily get rid of those gates, sometimes, Evan. Ah, uh, what a shame. What a shame. Bye bye, gates. You won't be missed. At all. Those gates have really been annoying, that one. The, uh, the other gate on the other side there won't open far enough. So it was like, just closed enough. It was kind of annoying when you went through it, right? And then, of course, if you try to go up this road that's here, I wonder, well, then you got to, like, sneak past that other gate that's open there. It's, uh, yeah. Not sure what the mod author was thinking when they did that one, but... Okay, so to our F12 menu, item, we need, is it this one? Yes, fill unit, fill with seeds, check. I don't know, I mean, if anyone has any other good ideas how to fill this with seed, let me know. I mean, I suppose I could go back down to our silo and do dances and circles around it, see once if we actually finally find a uh, fill for it, but. Maybe there is one, I just don't know where we need to be at one. And like I said, I, I can't get any covers to open on it. I mean, unless it's some sort of key combination, I just have to start, like, pushing every single key on the keyboard. That would be kind of annoying. Uh, RC Wynn was saying, by the way, you can get a semi-trailer in the oil factory. It's just a pain. It seems like the ramps are a bit too steep. Uh, great videos. Hey, thank you very much for that. And uh, good to know, like, if we do get a semi-trailer, we can actually get it in there if we want to. To be honest, given the uh, trouble that it looks like, we probably won't bother getting a semi. We'll maybe just stick with, like, the gravity wagons and stuff like that. Those are at least a little bit shorter. But even the gravity wagons, I'm getting into that uh, cell point there. Um, or no, the there's the bail loader. That's right. It was the bail loader. Getting that into that cell point. And because of the angle of the ramps, it's it's really hard to even get that in there. Yeah, definitely kind of annoying. Anyway, I've been looking at the time here. Looks like it is, unfortunately, time to wrap it up here for this episode. So on that note, you folks have any comments and or questions, be sure to leave them down below. And as always, Evan, thanks for watching. Until next time.